Okay. Many a fool and idiot on social platforms can inspire content without addressing them directly. You know the hateful ones, the socially dysfunctional ones, the vitriolic, impulsive ones, the paranoid ones who see enemies in the shadows, as I've explained before, and done a metaphor for about a description of enemy in the shadow, like a child having a nightmare in the middle of the night, convinced that there's somebody in the corner. Because the way the shadows fall in the twilight or the darkness, turn the light on when they scream out to their parents. In the middle of the night, the parents come out to make sure the child's all right. And the light comes on, the light of knowledge, if you will. And there we have the lights on, there's nobody in the corner ready to pounce or ready to do something. Some of these individuals get so attached to a fake uh, or a, a sure online is fine, you have your aliases and all that, but how far are you going to push it to a point where you're so egotistically attached to your avatar or whatever you use your alias online that if somebody says something, against your uh how you your mental the little stories you tell yourself about the avatar and all that um and get so obsessively up, upset about it and because you're so obsessed about the image then you need therapy there that's where psychological things end up being going wrong like you know you split personalities even um so one individual calls himself mr black wolf has this avatar and many video shorts of being like it's all part of the logo the avatar and a voiceover of and one of them really makes me laugh because he's so weak and confused and it's the voiceover is you throw me to the wolves i'll come back leading the pack and there's all this music and it's all hardcore emotion but there's no facts involved in seeing the facts out for what they are by this individual somebody will tell him something and if he feels that it's true he'll believe them without actually finding out Another YouTube creator called Mockingbird Media actually was accused of being some other people because he didn't like something that Mockingbird Media just puts out things that mock very some of these dysfunctional people, basically. Um, but they don't go, go on camera. They have... Uh, funny oh it's humorous is funny it's it's kind of a kind of back in the day trolling was like ha got you joking and it, it evolved over time to a category of uh, vitriolic haters and some of these haters will use people like mr black wolf as a tool to the means to their own ends while they're behind the keyboard just laughing their ass off using him and others will laugh their ass off because of this stupidity while trying to put out the facts that people like that got wrong so there's all a big boiling pot of interaction through the internet by people which does kind of make it interesting and exciting um so yeah if somebody says dogs are related to wolves or descended genetically the same actually mr black wolves gets really upset over that believe it or not it was but how are they related that's what i want to do on this video i have a new chair by the way i don't know if i could lean forward i've got nothing on underneath so i don't want to stand up but this chair super comfy i love it adjustable um where was I? Wolves, yeah, how are they related? How do you turn a wolf into a poodle? 
Well, it's natural. It's not natural selection. It's artificial selection, breeding a certain trait, domestication. Genetically, humans are the same. Uh, of like, if you have a white Caucasian versus um, a black African, in you're ninety nine point nine percent the same. How are you? Di how do you look different though? That's not a race, even though the term race, what race are you, is put out there, which really feeds fire to ignorance and lack of knowledge of who we really are as human beings, a human race, and I guess would breed, yeah, or not breed, sorry, add fire, add fuel to fires of racism, if you will. It's some racist idiot going, oh, that's typical of your race, whatever. Phenotype you are. What is a phenotype? A phenotype is an expression of your gene sets. Some genes within a DNA strand, you got your DNA structure along the DNA, you got genes. Some of them are active, some of them are not. Combinations of activity and other only combinations along with that activity that are not active can result in a phenotype. So if a phenotype, I have genes within me for blue eyes, but my eyes are not blue. I follow my mother's genes that are turned on for my color of my eyes. Although you start off like, my mother's eyes are like hazel, but um, it seemed to be more more green. It's like a green hazel later in life, actually, than earlier. Um, although generally, it's usually not possible for your eyes to change color. But this is really more of the same color. Just you may lo lose some. <coughs> excuse me, lose some intensity of the color and. The way light reflects back out of your eye can make it seem sometimes like the colours change, but really it's to do with how light spectrum bounces back out. So wolves, yeah, a Jack Russell is a wolf, a poodle is a wolf, genetically. But physically, no, because the phenotype exp expression is a combination of different genes being turned on or off. Uh, some people, you know, again, my hair is fairly strong, uh, quite thick. My father's hair is fine. One of my brother's hair is very fine. And he's got blue eyes. My father's hair is fine. And they have blue eyes. My mother's hair thick. And they don't have blue eyes, right? So those gene types, which ones are turned on or off, cause an expression. And even to the general build, my parents are relatively short, but my mother's dad was a very tall person. So I'm close to six foot. So relatively taller than the average then. Of course, you know, I'll come across people taller than me, and it seems like people are getting taller and taller. There's a number of reasons for that. Particularly, you get past the 1800s, people exponentially started getting taller and taller. Why? Because better nutrition. And, you know, better nutrition, you live in longer, uh, better medication, as the... The decades evolved, vaccination and all of these things keep evolving until we end up living a longer and longer life. There's a lot of research now into, I don't want to call it um, reverse aging because it's really kind of not. Um, I would call it advanced healing, allowing your body to heal effectively in certain spans of time. There was 10 years ago, it was probably 11 years now, probably more, 
But there's a photo I keep in my wallet of myself way back when I was binge drinking alcohol and uh, it's a Chinese takeaway on the weekends. Still, even now to this day, I'd say I look older on that photo than I do now. Sort your diet out, you get better nutrition for your body and your brain. Sort your sleep out, your brain, you function better. Try to lower your stress. Things will work better. So, you know, this really reminds me of somebody who's, you know, comes to mind talking about the stress. Is this Mr. Black Wolf so attached to his egocentric self-image? So 99%... 99.9%, so in before 1993, people in the scientific community were saying, yeah, they're most likely related, we need to find out how. 1993, they started using comparisons of wolf and dog DNA, mitochondrial DNA, the mitochondria of... Uh, mitochondria is like, it's almost kind of like its own thing within a cell that supplies energy to the cell, if you will. It's, it's, that's a very, very layman way of saying it. There's other complexities that really require a whole separate video on that, but I don't know if I don't really feel the need to at the moment. Just think of it as uh, a cell having, like anything, requires energy input and energy output. The mitochondria aids that efficiency, okay, for the whole cell. So the DNA of the mitochondria would be the same as DNA for the cell. Uh, multiple cells make it just the DNA through and through, right? So the DNA, it's a good way to test DNA, mitochondrial DNA. This um, investigation in 1993 showed that no other living animal was more closely related to the domestic dog than the grey wolf. There's many types of wolves, but the grey wolf would be the closest. There'd be some variation across wolves, right? And you, you can, you know, what wolf do you want to be? If you don't want to be related to dogs, you'd just be called a, a barking mutt. This guy I'm thinking of is too dumb to realize there's many different types of breeds of wolves. Some are huge, robust, some are small, and delicate, actually, as a wolf. But we don't think consciously of that because the media just feeds us uh, the information of the, oh, the hardcore wolves, the typical leader of the pack, the this guy. <laughs> And another individual comes to mind is Steve McRae. And there's um, this guy uses Mr. Black Wolf to go into other people's DMs and say certain things. That seems to be confirmed. So he wants to come across as hardcore Mr. Black Wolf, the leader of the pack. Um, yeah, yeah, he's being led by... <laughs> Somebody who else who's proven themselves to be very dysfunctional as well. So who's your pack leader, Wolf? Is it Steve? <laughs> uh, this is amazingly backward. The people who use this individual, definitely. You can see him being used by... Because he's vitriolic, he's paranoid, he's angry all the time. He's accusatory without proof, accusing Mockingbird Media, who's another YouTube creator out there, of being certain people just because he didn't like those people and he was told by somebody who he does like was, oh, was probably the, these other people. Tell him something and he believes it. If, he, if you're on his side, tell him something and he doesn't believe it if you're not on his side. That's how simplistic he is and tribalistic he is or, you know and again i talk about tribalism before a bit here and there but tribalism on its own is not necessarily a bad thing but uh the way it's used is often a bad thing 
So, mitochondrial DNA, I have a page in front of me. Um, mitochondrial DNA is passed down by the mother. So you get your mitochondrial DNA from your mother without any genetic contribution from the father. And changes only through random mutations that occur from generation to generation. Scientists use this smaller and separate DNA sequence to estimate when populations of animals first diverged and to estimate the evolutionary relationships between organism, organisms. Evolution is just change over time via the natural selection. Um, it's not progress over time because, you know, you, there's a term out there called devolving, so you might to, you might have the natural selection go backwards. But it's not over time, whole way, bodies are going to improve and get better and better over time. That's like some very ill-informed, delusional people believe. Um, kind of like this. I've heard flat earthers claim that if evolution is a thing, how come animals aren't like humans? Well, we're all animals anyway. How come dogs aren't like humans? They, if they've been on the planet the same amount of time, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work like that. So, furthermore, if we can read up more on this in front of me, scientists use a smaller DNA. I read that bit. In the mid 2000s, new technology allowed scientists to map the much longer DNA sequence found in on the chromosomes of wolves. These chromosomes are like you got XY, you got a male wolf, you got X. Uh, you got XX, you got a female wolf. And probably like humans, you might have variations of combinations. XXY, YYX, and you get a more, like, a wolf that has more female tra traits in its build. That, but is all intents and purposes a male and vice versa. Yeah. But natural selection tend, would tend to breed out certain combinations that are not necessarily successful for the success of a pack structure out in the wild. Humans are different. We control our environment that isn't so exposed out there into nature out in the wild. So there's some more variation on that. So and I think that might be one of one of the reasons why and all of the bigger picture that I don't even know why just yet. And maybe even the scientists don't know why just yet. Um, but it's all fascinating. It's all genetics, it's DNA, natural selection. It's all interesting, I think, anyway. Um, you know, how do you end up with a poodle from a wolf? Well, certain genes be turned on or off, and then you breed that in selectively. And other genes are, you know, there's mutation, and then other genes are turned on or off. Again, it's natural, it's not natural, it's selective breeding. And selectively, we can breed animals that really would not survive out there in the wild. They need the human environment, they need the structure of domestication uh, and be a pet otherwise they you don't do very well but the wolf does why because natural selection bred those in the ones that weren't so successful in natural selection died out out in the wild yeah so scientists use the, this DNA. Uh, mid 2000 technology allowed scientists to use longer DNA sequence found on the chromosomes of wolves and dogs. The genes that actually code for physical traits and behavior. Genes. Genes are on, that's not your Levi's, a J E A N S, your G E N E S, your gene set, your genes that dictate what color hair you got. 
your, your typical type of skin. Does it tan quickly? Does it burn out in the sun easily? Are you very fair, very white? Are you? Do you have ginger hair? Do you, do you have freckles? All this is dictated by different genes being turned on or off along a DNA strand. This is why you can have differences among humans, differences among other animals, dogs, yeah, and yet all humans are one species, a human species, all dogs are wolves, and so on, right? Whatever animal you want to pick, whatever species you want to pick, kind of see the absurdity of calling different people a race, then, doesn't it? Because they're not, they're a human race with different phenotype, the terms phenotype, a phenotype is the expression or the result of the physical expression of certain combinations of genes being turned on or off. Mr. Black Wolf is too dumb to understand all this, but this I thought I'd just do a video on this. That this is why, you know, people may be thinking, how, how's, how is that a wolf? And then point to their pet Chihuahua, <laughs> little tiny thing. I think some of the inbreeding and the um, selective breeding really shouldn't be being done because some of it is cruel. Is some of the like French bulldog, they suffer a lot with their eyes. Um, other other bulldogs with a squashed up face. I think it's a French bulldog as well. Breathing issues. They, it's cruel, and certain breeds I think should be bred out because of that. Yeah, regardless of that, anyway. Between 99.9% uh, .9 or technically 99.96, if you want to be more specific, apparently, between dog and grey wolf, as covered in 2007 review paper on the topic. This similarly is so profound that hybridization often occurs between dogs and wolves. By the biological definition of species, this would mean that domestic dog is a subspecies of the grey wolf. That would actually make Mr. Black Wolf feel a little more, more comfortable in his obsession to his attachment to his ego-driven avatar. That's a long thought process. Um, yeah, subspecies... There, remain, there remains some debate, however, as to what the appropriate classification for the domestic dog would be, with some arguing that the domestic dog should be its own distinct species. But if you're going to go down that route, all these different phenotypes... You got a problem again. Call it, you're going to call each different phenotype of species, but when it's technically not correct, we're doing that to ourselves. You, you know, to some degree. Oh, you, you know, dark skin and look a particular way, or black, black African, white fair skin, white Caucasian, um, uh, European. Caucasian, whatever. And we all, apparently, scientifically, it seemed to be supported that we all came out of the African continent, very close to the equator. Natural selection dictated the fairer skin when we started breeding further away from the equator. Why did the skin get lighter, though? Well, because there's a chain reaction that happens with... The UV spectrum in sunlight that affects the fatty layer just underneath our skin. This is a very complicated domino effect chain reaction that ends up giving us a good substantial amount of vitamin D in our blood, in our 
not just in our blood, but you know, vitamin D doing its thing. Vitamin D is good for your skin. Of course, natural selection probably bred out those where it wasn't being utilized for uh, uh, effective for the skin. Why? Because those may have been the ones who are getting skin lesions or skin problems more than the average person, which ended up them with shorter lifespan. Um, and natural selection preferred the ones that was utilizing vitamin D for this as well as other things because UV light too much can damage your skin. See how that's how natural selection can work in some ways. And artificial selection by human interaction end up with a domestic dog. So these advances in genetic analysis have allowed scientists to as well to pin down the probable timing of the split between two uh, can canid lineages. Uh, a study published in 2015 which compared the whole genome sequence of dogs to a 35,000 year old Siberian wolf. Now, Siberian wolves, they're big. That's a big one. That's a big, robust um, animal. Siberian wolf specimen suggested the split likely occurred between 27,000 and 40,000 years ago. The domestic dogs are likely themselves the descendants of a now extinct descendant of grey wolves. Yeah, there we go. Um, I'm going to look up how many wolves currently exist, um, or maybe the extinct ones as well. Uh, let's have a look. Do, do, do. Is it Iberian Wolf and Siberian Wolf? I don't know if that's the same thing or not. I, how many... Let's, let's try it. How many species of wolf? How many breeds of wolf, species of wolf? Do, 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 do. This grey wolf subspecies, or well, again, it's debatable, I think, whether they're subspecies or not. Or maybe I'm, I don't, not sure. However, let's have a look at that page anyway. That's a bit small, I need to zoom in. I know you can't see it, but I'll reiterate it to you. These are apparently grey wolf subspecies. There's Arctic wolf, Northwestern wolf, Plains wolf, Coastal wolf, Mexican wolf, Tundra wolf, Tibetan and Himalayan wolf. There's also Iberian wolf, Italian wolf, Eurasian wolf, Persian and Indian wolf, Arabian wolf, Red Wolf, Eastern Wolf, and he, each one seems to be a little bit kind of like smaller than there's some that look bigger. Yeah, there's a size comparison Arctic Wolf being a largest against Eastern Timber Wolf and Great Plains Wolf and Mackenzie Valley Wolf. Yeah, so there's a lot of information out there. There's all different types of wolves. Which one is Mr. Black Wolf? He, none of them. He's a little puppy, domesticated dog that still needs to get past the emotional stage in life where he's stamping his feet. What about me? I want, I want, I want, just like a spoiled child. The vitriolic 
hateful side of him, though, really can affect some people who are a little maybe emotionally unbalanced themselves out of perhaps no fault of their own or, you know, they feel threatened easily. And he gets a lot wrong all the time because he's being used as a tool by other haters who themselves get a lot wrong as well but they don't care they don't care about safety of other people and in terms of them feeling safe whether it's actual realized safety or not and he talks about you know i'm gonna find out about all your family i've seen this actually happen before when some paranoid delusional nutter in the in northern ireland on a live streaming network that I don't even know if that um, live streaming website exists anymore. I say network was its own page and it was being run in such a garbage way. But somebody was using a fictional character's surname and first name uh, was whatever would be a typical first name. Um, an avatar of uh, something to do perhaps was it the Avengers character something like that some fictional superhero thing but the idiot in Northern Ireland took it for as if it was legit that was their surname and ended up targeting a family it had nothing to do with the one that you were targeting and causing hassle that of a family was reached out to with apology from the one being victimized by this idiot in Northern Ireland. This is the type of crap that Mr. Black Wolf will end up doing and be utilized as a tool to doing. While all these nutters laugh at him behind a keyboard and a screen and the internet, it's been put out that a live stream to show just how backward his thinking is in step by step. Um, as a Dunfact Friday produced on a, on a Saturday, in a rare occasion that happens. Uh, because, you know, sometimes you get an extra person to talk about. And it was Mr. Black Wolf. This nut job has got um, restraining order papers put out to him. And he's barking away, accusatory, doubling down. And I've said it before in other videos. These idiots keep trying harder and not smarter. Because they could never be wrong is their egocentric delusion. Whereas much more balanced people on the internet, myself and others, will ask, am I wrong about that? I, I've said in my videos, correct me if I'm wrong. I've used those terms. And if I'm wrong about something, that's okay. And it's wonderful to have a community to correct you on things helping each other help each other and uh, myself perhaps correct them other people on things as well critical thinking humbleness instead of aggressive doubling down delusion that you're always right and aggressive uh egotism uh extreme attachment to their avatar and logo like the 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 wolf and it's really quite comical with one of his shorts coming up as the audio saying something like, uh, you throw me to the walls, I'll come back leading the pack. When it's really another YouTuber, Steve McRae, which is leading him, really, because he's the one that fair run around and do his master's bidding. Who's the alpha wolf in, in that pack? Perhaps, Steve, if you could call it, alpha if there is such a thing and that's another thing for uh rhetoric of alpha male 
No, there, there's no such thing. It, it just um, I'll do a separate video on the psychology of that, perhaps, or the metaphors that are associated with it. Because I, I probably likely that people like Mr. Black Wolf would be a fan of people like Andrew Tate, the fake alpha, appealing to very insecure, naive. Men and women, actually, you know, and women are roped into that, deluding and supporting Andrew Tate, which is, you know, so backward. Thank you for watching. Take care, and I look forward to doing another video soon. Hope you might have learned something. So basically, there's certain gene sets on a DNA, your DNA strand. That can be turned on or off. Will dictate what's your eye color, what's your skin color, which what's your hair color. Um, are you more robust? Um, are you delicate? You know, or are you like in women? You call it, I think I call it petite or whatever. Or or you are a bit bit rotunds, you know, on the larger side. This can be genetics. Of course, it can be like sensible diet as well. If you're like if you're overweight, some people say, "Oh, it's just my genetics." And uh, when you and then you look at what they are actually eating, well, no, you can intervene. Um, you know, you may have a genetic lenience, perhaps, to like sugary foods, and all that. And I think that's all humans, though. Actually, you know, we're very addictive to many things. Yeah, uh, you get easily addicted to many things. Peace out again. I'll I'll be off now. Thank you for watching. Bye. Traditionally, in chess, white goes first. Opposition is at the top. I'm at the bottom. Already played this game in a. Uh, a gameplay where it's a very short timeline uh, five minute game on chess.com you've heard me talk about Mr. Black Wolf and I don't address him directly as much as another person that I'll talk about they hate it when they talked about these types of people or how they are addressed directly and they hate it when they're ignored but they're so weak and vitriolic this see this uh, oh here we go it's a racist thing why because it's black and white that, that wasn't intended that's not the intention he will always see racism in the shadows why because he's racist we've seen it time and time again um very paranoid very vitriolic very backward as i've mentioned already uh he just believes people who want to when I played him for trolling or means or ends whatever their stupid goal is and if he feels like the person but just feels like the person's what the person's saying is true he'll go along with it regardless of actually finding out so it'd be very easy to beat that kind of mentality in chess because they don't analyse what the hell's going on on the board while it's going on. And certainly, I did, but you haven't got much time to in a five minute chess game. So, it would be weak on my part to be at my full um, skills on the gameplay. But it can, doing five minute games can actually improve your longer term games. So let's play. So white went first, which was me, opposition, me, opposition. So already, I've always played as a bishop willing to be sacrificed to take a knight. The knight is extremely powerful because if you can see my cursor there, they can go two spaces this way then either way to the side of that or they can go two places this way and obviously their size block but you know this way if these weren't here then it'd be this way that way 
this way. That way. That way. That way. The bishop can only go this way and that way. Diagonally. It's deceiving for a beginner on chess when they, they kind of typically think about pieces going in straight lines where well, knight does not. It will go at right angles. Two spaces forward and one left or right, if you will. And so, the next move. Normally I would have took it, but I was playing deliberately in a weaker way. Um, I played this player before and then they're never really that good. This was on chess.com. Not going to mention their name because they're, you know, they're learning. I'm learning. I'm not an expert, so but it's it's all good. But this is how Wolf would play. It's very impulsive, rather than you know, very reactive, rather than actually thinking about what you're doing, looking what is really right in front of you, as opposed to what you feel is there and what you feel like is true not really looking at the facts so now the horse is under threat the horse the knight been under threat again and he repositions himself into a weaker position this is what wolf does is uh, Trump comes across as hardcore and then backs off runs away with his tail behind his legs and he comes across as hardcore again but every time he does he's putting himself in a position of weakness when other people point out his foolishness and uh, he goes quiet and he comes back with a a resort of mental gymnastics bye bye and even more powerful for me I did not have to sacrifice this bishop normally I would you know just sacrifice the bishop anyway from this position we gone in and took it but no instead we go that we do that result now the bishops end the thread very easy to remove the threat by coming back and you know I have more power now than the opposition if you open your mind before you open your mouth like I said in a super chat and, and Cheshire's uh, live stream referring to Wolf yesterday wouldn't have to keep losing kind of like if he was playing chess this is how he would be losing uh, kind of metaphorically and literally if he really played I'll, I'll buy it. if he even knows how to play this amazing game at all I love chess I'm not really that good but it's a, it's a great game I love it so just general shuffling around he removed uh, they removed their a bishop out of the fret, just as I did earlier. There, there's some pawns that can be taken on either side, and it begins to happen. And off we go. See there. See, I could of position my bishop there and it puts that into threat you know as a sacrifice or it could uh, you know the opposition could take it but then I could take it with the knight but then they could position their queen over and then that's a threat to the knight and they don't have to bring out the queen right out too early all they need to do is one space to one space over this is <laughs> planning and thinking 
which Wolf doesn't do. He's highly reactive. He cannot control himself. Let's move forward a bit. So now the next night is out. I still got two nights, which is gives me extra, in my opinion, power over them um, substantially because the knights can own a substantial amount of territory all in one go on the board. Just don't forget your position like this can also let's say the king there was my king and the knight there that then means that that king is in check so that's uh, another thing to think about about the knight's positions and how you can use knights in collaboration with your other pieces that's called teamwork something Wolf knows nothing about because he is a puppet for people who want to puppeteer other people for drama and views and egotistical self-importance for their channel yeah all this modding everyone doesn't mean a damn thing in his chat all it does is feed his ego thinking he's somehow some kind of leader of the pack when it's him who runs around into other people's DMs because Steve told him to. So it's Steve's little errand boy. Steve's therefore the leader of that pack, perhaps. Or in that fantasy of it being a pack, you know, some actual coherent group when it's not. It's all emotion and no organization. So now my queen's under threat. And if I did take it, I I get that taken. I got distracted then by somebody was trying to ring me. I think it's work trying to ring me, but um, let's uh, ignore it for now. I'm supposed to have today off. I'll ring it back in a minute. So dunk there then the queen can be taken so i would lose my queen the queen is a very powerful piece but just because it's so powerful you shouldn't bring it out too early while the opposition still has all these weapons of destruction like the horse and the bishop or in tandem and teamwork and organization so i block it now if it's taken, I can take it with the knight, or I can come in and take it with the queen there without the queen being under threat. But then they decide to put me in check anyway, rather weak because I don't see what they're trying to do there. Keep going forward. And now they could come in here, take that. I take that bishop, which would put me in check, which is a little bit more powerful because the line of sight of the queen here sees straight down. And to come out of that check, I couldn't go that side. But I could go um, up one, or maybe down one. can't actually remember what happened at this point. They, yeah, remember that bit? There we go. That's it. Let's see, so... Now you've really screwed the pooch. Because I still have two knights. Now you have this person. has no knights. They don't have any power, really. Relatively to what I have on the board right now. Dumbest thing you should ever do is castle too early or castle right behind, you're like really trapping this while the queen's out and a bishop out ready for angular attack. Now I've moved that forward because 
They position the south. Yet Castling is never really as powerful as people think it is. Certain situations it is. It really does um, make it difficult for the opposition sometimes. Usually a lot of the time. My personal opinion on it, it doesn't tend to work. Uh, and it shows, I think it shows a bit of panic from the opposition as well. They have the queen, they have these rooks, and they have a bishop. Really, I don't know why they're panicking so much. With And then they have the castle. It really is, isn't a very good idea. Plus, trapping it behind there, you can see what's about to happen. Surely, all I gotta do is slam in my queen right there. They can't take it because the bishop has now been freed up by my forward movement of the pawn here. So the line of sight is all the way there. They can't come in a line of sight from that angle because of the bishop, and they can't do anything because line of sight for the queen is horizontal, vertical as well as diagonal. So what that was for, I don't know. What they bring in, you know, um, really they would have been wise to have just brought in their bishop here to their square, instead of moving their rook that would slow down the chances of me doing what I'm about to do. Good night.